Hello, this is the Daily Forex Report for December 14th. We are looking at the U.S.-Japanese yen pair first. This pair had a very strong tail on it, very long tail on it. Did come back, closed higher, overall moving sideways. Look for this pair to continue moving sideways over this next session, potentially moving as high as 84.15, possibly moving down to 82.38. Look for this pair to potentially hit some resistance around 84.00. Look for some support around 82.75. Now the Euro USD pair, this pair moved higher, had a uh, pre broke previous resistance levels, pulled back, closed lower, we're all moving sideways. Look for it to potentially move up and hit resistance at 13500, possibly moving down and hitting some support around 13300. Now the pound US dollar pair, this pair broke previous sessions high but did close lower. Look for this pair to overall moving sideways, slight, slight bias to the upside. Look for it to potentially go as high as 159.86, possibly as low as 156.63. Look for some resistance around 159.12 and look for some support around 157.15. Now the U.S. Swiss, this pair closed lower, moving lower bias to the downside. Look for it to potentially on reversal hit some resistance around 09725 and possibly moving up and hitting some support around 09550. <clears throat> now as far as news announcements go, we have the pound releasing their jobless claims change for November at 4.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Consensus on that is that it's moved from negative 3.7K to negative 3.0K. We also have the U.S. releasing their consumer price index for November at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Consensus on that is that it has dropped from 1.2% to 1.1%. Okay, now as far as what I'm looking at, I want to show you something. Let's back out in the U.S. Uh, in the U.S. Swiss here. If you notice, we have a low that was made, <coughs> pair moved higher, another low that was made, pair moved higher. So what would be a good uh, a good way to use this? And then it moved lower again and then moved higher. So at this point, when we get this, this uh, pivot reversal high here that was created, a swing trade opportunity, you could have looked at taking that just on a micro level right here. But overall, what else could you have done? Well... We could definitely draw some trend lines, taking the lows from low to low, and look what it produces, taking this low. So around this area, we have this low, this low, and this one here, all moving higher, obviously. But a breakdown at this point down to here would have been a very good play to take uh, a break of the trend lines producing roughly about 80 pips or so. So just keeping this in mind, looking at a little bit longer time frame uh, than such a you know close in, a one or two bar setup, you can actually use your trend lines to look for something a little bit further. And the New Zealand US dollar and the Australian US dollar, I wanna show you some, some things here. Let's remove those trend lines. These two pairs are correlated, so if you wanted to, you could go to the New Zealand US dollar and look for potential breaks to the upside using some of the uh, current price action. You can see that we've had an opportunity that, uh, or the market peaked, then moved lower, peaked again, moved lower, peaked again, and has moved lower. So there's a the potential for it to break to the upside, especially considering the uh, carry trade type opportunities with this pair in the US dollar. So if you draw your trend lines out, you can see we have an opportunity that if this pair surges to the upside from where it is currently, we have a potential to grab about 73 pips in this example. Now you can do this on any time frame, obviously, uh, to get a breakout to the upside about a, a 60 pip move and then full for 125, definitely could happen. I mean, we have days that range 130 easy with this pair. Now, that's to the upside. Remember, the New Zealand US dollar is correlated positively with the Australian US dollar, which means that they should move in the same direction, or at least in the same general direction. 
So what we want to do now that we have a potential to the upside, let's take a look at drawing some trend lines to the downside. Here we have one. And here we have another. It's kind of steep and you typically want more time to go by between uh, these two. You can see we had a little bit of a head and shoulders formation here as well that you could uh, look to have taken advantage of previously, uh, taking basically this part out of the market. But here we have an opportunity if the market moves lower to potentially catch some of this downside. This of course would be a very strong move of about 100, or 230 pips, risking about 130. So these are just some opportunities that, that you can see using trend lines. So don't be afraid to use trend lines. Remember when you use trend lines, you definitely want to back it out. If you noticed, I had previously about three months on the chart, looking at the chart. Uh, this would be one month right here, from here to here, and here to here. Uh, this is the start of a new month, of course, and here's another one. You want to at least have three three to four months on this chart, possibly more. Of course, if you back out, you can get uh, an even different view of the markets and what they could potentially do. And then once you have some, some trend lines drawn, of course, you can zoom in and get a little bit closer view of what it could actually look like and what is actually occurring to get potentially some better stop losses. You notice here we have moved higher, moved higher, and then moved back down. So we could have several spots where we could place our stop losses uh, that would be closer than what we'd originally looked at. Well, that about wraps us up for today. Until next time, this is Jason Fielder. Good trading.